Hi, my name is Katie, and I'm an emergency medicine resident. And I'm Jennifer Dorman. I'm the clinical nurse specialist for the rapid response team. And today we're going to talk to you about the intraosseous catheter, Easy IO. Hey, Jen, why are we using the Easy IO? Oh, Katie, I'm so glad you asked. The IO is a great tool. It's super quick to get into patients. ACLS recommends it for insertion during codes and rapid responses, and you want to use it for quick administration of fluids and vasopressors in any type of emergency. But I feel like you probably shouldn't use it if the patient has a fracture or an infection over the site, right? Katie, that is true. So Katie, I have this IO to put in. Can you tell me where it goes? Absolutely. There are actually two preferred locations for the IO insertion. The first one is the proximal humerus, which is the best for rapidly infusing medications and fluids. And the second is the tibial tuberosity, which is the preferred location in children. Hmm. But you know what? I know where to put them, but I'm not exactly sure which type of needle I should select. Oh, Katie, I'm so glad you asked, because I just happen to have two needles right here. Also, if you look in the bottom of your screen, you'll see the needle selection. We have three different types of needles. Your yellow needle, which is most commonly used for proximal humerus, and that is 45 millimeters. Your blue needle is most often chosen for the tibial location, which is 25 millimeters. And the pink needle is used most often in pediatrics. Jen, would you mind being my model so I can show all these lovely people at home exactly where we insert the proximal humerus needle? Of course, would be happy to. The first thing you want to do is position your patient. Take their arm, flex at the elbow, internally rotate and adduct so that the patient's palm is resting on their abdomen. You want to take the ulnar surface of one hand and place it in the axilla. Take the ulnar surface of the other arm and place it in the middle of the humerus. Where your thumbs meet in the middle will be the location of the surgical neck. Palpate up the surgical neck until you palpate a golf ball shaped structure which will be the greater tubercle. This is the site of insertion for the IO in the proximal humerus. So now that you have identified your IO site, whether it's proximal or tibia, you want to gather your supplies. So with your supplies, you're going to have in that easy IO kit that we showed you earlier, your power driver, your needle that you selected, it will come in a package like this. For the purposes of this video, we're using a training kit, so the needle is red. You'll also want to gather some alcohol or some chlorhexidine and, of course, a dressing for when you're done. In the kit comes an extension tubing, which will be primed with normal saline, ready to go. So when you have your needle in, you will attach the extender set. It also comes with a sharps container, so you can place your needle once it's inserted. So you've identified your site. This is a non-sterile procedure, aseptic technique. Of course, you want to be wearing gloves. You want to take your alcohol swab and swab the site. Of course, you've explained the procedure to your patient. You're going to gather your needle. You're going to remove the cap. And you're going to attach it to the power driver. It's magnetic, so you'll notice that it'll click right in. And that's how you know that it is indeed inside the power driver. Once you've identified your site, you just want to immobilize the joint, keep it steady. You're going to clean the site with alcohol. You want to go in at a 45 degree angle, and the first thing you want to do is just pierce the skin, enough that you can feel a little bit of bone. You want to make sure that you can see at least one black line on your needle. That will ensure that you have chosen the correct needle length. If you do not see a black line, go to the next higher length. At that point, you want to apply firm pressure to the bone, and you're going to press down on the trigger. And that's it. You will remove the power driver. As you note, the needle is flush with the skin, and that's what you should see. At this point, you're going to take off the needle cap here. This is going to go into the sharps. I'm going to place it here for training. And you're going to attach your primed IV tubing with saline to the site. After that, you just want to secure the site, of course, with a dressing. You're going to pull back slightly to aspirate for any bone marrow or blood return. That will help indicate and show you if it is indeed the correct site. If you don't see bone marrow or blood, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're in the incorrect site. Some other things that you can look for is to make sure the medication is working and there's no infiltration around the site. To identify the site of the tibia for IO insertion, you first want to locate the patella. Once you've located the inferior portion of the patella, you want to go two finger breaths below and two finger breaths medial to identify the tibial tuberosity. It will feel like a hard lump right next to the patella. That is your insertion site. 
Hey Jen, now that we've inserted the IO, isn't it painful for the patient? Katie, that's a great question. It's a common misconception that the insertion of the IO itself is painful, but what's actually painful is the infusion. So how can we mitigate the pain for the patient? Another great question, Katie. What we like to use is lidocaine, 2% preservative free. And when you're about to insert it, in the previous clip, for unresponsive patients, patients that are not responsive to pain, we had primed this extension tubing with saline. If the patient was responsive to pain, if I was about to put this in Katie right now, I would need to prime this with the 2% lidocaine. A practitioner must order the appropriate dose based on the patient's weight, and they can use the Hickson lidocaine scale. There's also an IO order set in SEM that the practitioners can use to decide what dose is appropriate. Once you prime the extension set with lidocaine, you want to inject very slowly into the IO space, and you want to allow the lidocaine to sit in the medullary space for about a minute so the anesthetic effect can take place. Once that occurs, you want to continue with a very fast flush of at least 10 mLs of normal saline. So once that extension piece is in, the lidocaine has dwelled into the space, I'm going to take my 10 cc syringe and I'm going to push very fast. Um, you need to get through the, the fibers in the bone, so you might feel a little resistance in the beginning, and then it should be a free flow. If you do not get a good flow, that means it's not in. So no, no flow, no flush. Well, that was very painless. Jen, I have learned so much here today. First, I learned that these are incredibly common, and they really should be the first choice of IV access in a code situation. Second, I learned that you can put anything through an I.O., and the insertion's not painful, but we should all remember that if we're doing this in an awake patient, we should be using the 2% lidocaine that you discussed. Absolutely, Katie. And don't forget, an I.O. should not stay in for more than 24 hours. Uh, very important. And when managing an I.O., it's really no different than a peripheral line. You just want to watch for signs of infiltration, redness, swelling, infection at the site, just like a regular peripheral I I IV. And if that's the case, if it does infiltrate, then you can follow Maimonides' guidelines for an infiltrated IV. Once you're ready to remove it after 24 hours, it's quite simple. You're just gonna take a 10 cc syringe, you're gonna attach it to your needle, and you're gonna turn and directly pull clockwise, and that's it. Dispose in sharps, and you're all done. Awesome. We hope you learned something today and had fun. Excellent, thank you. If you have any other questions, you can contact myself, Jennifer Dorman, at extension 8148.